Ha! <laughs> Beat you, nobody. Let's make mead. Welcome back to the bunker, everyone. So nice of you to join me here in my little home brewing series. In episode one, we started our hard cider with blueberries. And it's been down here, uh, kind of happily bubbling away for about a month, and it is ready to go into secondary fermentation. We're gonna go through all the steps of adding in the hops, and then I'm gonna add some more blueberries to it, just like we outlined in episode one, to give it a nice little flavor kick at the end of our secondary. Before we do that, though, I wanna make the best use of all the equipment that I've got here. Let nothing go to waste during a time like this, right? So we're gonna be grabbing our Demijohn down here and starting some small batch mead. I got the idea for this because it was based off of a mead I had quite some time ago. Um, can't remember the name of the company, but it had hibiscus flowers in it. And I'm looking forward to trying to make a nice tart mead that should have a good sweetness, good flavor to it. And uh, well, I've got leftover honey upstairs. So the timing works out. I was able to buy some more when I went out and did my shopping. And uh, yeah, let's get right into the planning phase of this. Then we'll have to venture upstairs and get the mead going. Now mead is relatively straightforward to make. The Vikings did it back in the day and if they could do it, you can too. No offense to any potential Vikings who are watching this. I don't know what you're doing on YouTube anyways. Get back to pillaging. Now is probably a great time to do it. We're gonna start with a small amount of water. We're gonna shoot for maybe eh, half a gallon. And we're gonna put that under medium heat. We don't want this to boil. We'll boil it to start just to get some of the impurities out of the water out. But we wanna bring it down to allow the honey to melt without scorching. So just a little bit of heat underneath. Since my Demijohn is in metric, it can hold about eh, five liters. But this is America, we use Imperial here. My car gets 40 rods to the hog's head and that is the way that I like it. So we're gonna add maybe about hmm, four or five pounds of honey to this. My bear looks actually really terrified. It's probably because he's got one of these in his head. You'd look like that too if there was a nozzle coming out of the top of your cranium. Honey goes in and then before we add it to our Demijohn, let's see if we can draw this. It's a really beautiful tear shaped sort of uh, vase looking thing that can be used to ferment wines and well, mead. Uh, before we add it to this, we're also gonna add some cool water in. We're gonna try to shock this just a little bit. I don't know if that's gonna be necessary. I ordered a wort chiller, but it hasn't showed up next. So we'll just dump this in an ice bath. Now this is where the twist comes in. When we've got this going on the stove, I want to add in some hibiscus tea bags to give it a bit of that hibiscus flavor. These are really quite beautiful flowers and I'm going to make just an absolutely hideous drawing of a hibiscus flower on this box of tea. Hibiscus tea in our must, add in a little more water, lots of honey. What could possibly go wrong? Mm. We're gonna find out upstairs. Let's go. Just need to cut in here and let you all know that during the mead making process, my lav mic decided to stop recording. It's only episode two and we've already got technical difficulties. Go, go figure. Rather than subjugate you all to the awful quality of my camcorder mic, I'll be doing a voiceover for the rest of the video. I'm sure that this will be several times more insightful and interesting than anything I said during the process anyways. So during the initial setup, I put about half a gallon of tap water on the stove top in a sanitized stock pot. If you notice to the right of the pot, I've laid down a white towel on the countertop with all my other sanitized equipment. With that white towel down, I can just tell at a glance at what's sanitized and what I'll be able to use in the must during these beginning steps. I highly recommend doing this just to avoid cross-contamination, plus you won't really need to think about what's clean and what's not. The equipment for making the mead was pretty straightforward. Clean spoon to stir in the honey thermometer to take a temp reading on the water, and a funnel to pour the must into my brewing vessel. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm using my five liter Demijohn for this. Uh, these things are really neat and come with a basket that makes it both easy to carry and it diffuses the light a little bit during the fermentation process. Really useful. Definitely had to get a glamour shot of this thing since it's just such a pretty piece of glassware. Demijohn of course has its own stopper and a place for an airlock as well. Those have been sanitized and placed on my towel too. 
Well, I was waiting for the water to boil. I needed to figure out how much tea to use. Now, typically you use one tea bag for an eight to 10 ounce cup of tea. And since we've got uh, 64 ounces and a half gallon, I mean, provided I did my math right, I'm gonna need several bags of tea. Since the water level was relatively low in the stock pot, I got creative and tied all the tea bags to a piece of kitchen twine. I fashioned it in this sort of tea fishing lure thing. Pretty sure I made some sort of stupid pun along the lines too while I was doing this, like, oh, doing this feels not tea. I, I don't know, it was dumb and I'm really glad that I cut it out. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll work just fine. Anyways, the tea lure went into the boiling water as well as a Camden tablet. Since the honey I was using was mostly local raw stuff, I wanted to make sure it was purified of any foreign yeast strains or odd flavors. If you're ever unsure about the fruits, honey, or other ingredients you're using, toss one of these into your must and wait a while before you pitch your yeast. Generally, they say 24 hours. I didn't wait quite that long. It's just a little impatient. I have a really handy instant read thermometer that I used to check when the water level was about 160 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Seemed to be the perfect temperature range for adding in the honey because when I added it in, it dissipated almost immediately and nothing scorched or stuck to the bottom of the pot. As soon as the four pounds of honey were incorporated, I shocked the kettle in an ice bath in my sink. We can bring this in a little bit. You can watch this float in our ice bath. Look at it go. Amazing. And waited a bit for the temp to drop, and then it went right into the demijohn. Not a single drop goes to waste. It's quarantine thinking. Ah. There we are. Our nice, warm teardrop. Lovely. That sat for several hours while the Campton tablet did its thing, and later on I added enough purified water to fill the demijohn. Uh, I left some headroom on the top and then swirled it to pitch my yeast just to get a nice even coating around the top. For this project, I uh, used some leftover Premier Classique, which is of course French for Premier Classic. Uh, this was leftover from a different batch of wine that I did a while ago. It was roughly a third of the packet. The must was relatively hazy at the end, but I opted not to add in any pectin enzyme or any other additives other than yeast nutrient, of course. When you see mead, it's usually got a little bit of that hazy color to it from the honey. I suppose with all the tea in it, it's going to pour opaque. I don't think there's much that I can be doing about that. I could add pectic enzyme to it, but I think we're just gonna let this go au naturel, and uh, if it pours cloudy, it pours cloudy. <clears throat> Again, trying new things, going into new territory, and blazing new trails. Normally I name my home brews when I'm working on them, and this one was no different. A lot of the wineries that I've been to do meat as kind of like a one-off release, and they make a big deal out of it. Um, it always seems to be more prestigious than it really is, and they would never besmirch their product by giving it a stupid name. But I would. Honey is sticky, and hibiscus plants have really large stamens, so it was easy. Sticky stamen. Uh, it rolls off the tongue and it reminds me of that uh, slap chop guy. Hey guys, it's Vince here. Remember to wipe down your sticky stamens with a sham wow. <laughs> After I brought the demijohn downstairs, it was time to put the blueberry cider into secondary. Now, I use a big mouth bubbler for all of my secondaries. The wide mouth makes it a lot easier to add compotes, other fruit, other spices, or hot bags in, and then you can get them out a lot easier afterwards too. A lot of the people that I know have had issues with these things. Um, they say that the lid pops off after a few days of fermentation. And uh, there's two tips that I've found that really help prevent that. Number one, flip the gasket. These big mouth bubblers have a removable rubber gasket that goes around the inside of the blue lid. The rings go from narrow to wide and it looks similar to how a stopper looks that goes onto the top of your lid to hold an airlock. When you flip these and the wider gaskets are on the bottom, it just gives it a lot more room to grip. The other thing that I found that's handy is to make sure that it's completely bone dry after you sanitize it. You have to let this thing sit for a lot longer just to make sure that there's no liquid or no scum or soap from your star sand on it. If there is, it'll pop really really quickly up after you've got it on. The blueberries that I use for secondary, I bought frozen. I found that if you thaw them and refreeze them several times, the juice starts to give up a lot easier. I did this back and forth in a separate freezer bag and then just kept transferring it from fridge to freezer, fridge to freezer. When I dumped them on the plate, they were almost completely mush. 
I do a lot of brewing with minimal equipment, and I will say this, if you're racking and bottling a lot, it's almost imperative to have an auto siphon. These things are really handy, and you can just kind of kick back while gravity does all the work for you. Let's watch a time lapse. One last thing before we seal the five gallon up, we've got to add our mosaic hops, and these things smell absolutely amazing right out of the pack. Once you start brewing, whether you've got fresh hops or hop pellets, uh, they just smell great when you open them out of the pack. Uh, if the cider is high enough in your five gallon secondary, you can also let the hop bag rest under the lid, seal it up with the hot bag sort of hanging out. Not only will that give you a better seal with your lid, but it's a lot easier to just sort of pull that hot bag out. You can also sort of time your hops that way too. If you only want them in for a little while while secondary fermentation is going on, you can put them in a little later, take them out halfway through. It's a good way to really key in the flavor. There's really no harm though in letting that sock full of hops float on the top. That's all. Um, all that's left now is to let both the mead and the cider sit for a few weeks. Thank you again for watching. I hope you see you back for the next episode. Hopefully there will be fewer mic issues in the next one.